We're back again here on the Emerald Coast of Australia, and if you watched the last video, we spent the majority of our time testing the 22-250 on things like hog deer, Easter gray kangaroos, some of these smaller species here on the Emerald Coast. Today, we're going to do the exact opposite and target the two biggest species, Bantang and Saltwater Crocs. Oh, what the heck? This guy just warning called. The first croc of the hunt is going to be a legendary? What the? Down here on the beach. So one thing that I wanted to talk about with the crocs, and i to let him calm back down and get over here, it may apply more here than literally anywhere else. They are a class 7 animal, so unlike the American alligators, you can shoot them with the 300, and I don't know if they can still, you know, swim the deep water after being shot, drown down there, and never float back. I seriously have no idea if that's a thing, and I do not want to find out with this one, but with the ability to use a more powerful weapon, hopefully we can get him down fairly effectively. I really want him to come into the beach, though, and that is exactly what he's going to do. Now, the thing is, that angle is not so good. We could attempt like a brain shot or something. Because I want to try to get the double lung. The 300 has that type of capability. Look at the size of that guy, though. He's attentive, so he kind of knows we're here. If we just slowly scoot his way, I think we can maybe catch him as he turns when he goes alert here. That's what we want. I think that's doable. And then a quick follow-up, because we have the ability to use that bolt action. He's going down. I think it's going to be quick enough. Man, they are tough, though. I really hope he's not going to just drown down there. He shouldn't. He didn't go that far, and he's... I think he just popped back up. He did. I can't remember the diamond requirement. It's, it's 1,012, a, a low 1,000 requirement. In his max estimate, it was 1,045. Boy, would that be cool. Potential for our first diamond. Here on the Emerald Coast, we've been trolled by two legendary kangaroos so far. This one would be probably way cooler, not gonna lie. Ah, 991, it's a gold. Missed it by, what would that be, 24 still? Lots of trolls on this map. Left lung and then stomach. That is a bit of a heartbreaker for sure. Still kind of cool and still one that we will tax. Man, that really got my heart pumping, though. I I wish I knew if they could escape and drown. We haven't seen it yet with the crocs in the few that we've shot. But you definitely don't want to find out with a level 9 troll or not. But I guess that's kind of cool that that's the way we're going to start this hunt. They are everywhere along here, though. I've just got a little future Flantro editor's note here. Part of early access is having enough time to make the amount of videos that we do during this period. So this video was recorded before AW's live stream in which Jackson Beard did confirm the crocodiles aren't going to drown. We'll end up testing this later, but I wanted to say that now so that there's not a hundred comments saying we already know that. At the time, I didn't know, and I wanted to leave it in there since the tension was definitely real. And actually, why don't we test if they actually can drown now? So we're gonna go for an intestine shot on purpose and just let it run off into the water and see if it does actually float back up to the surface and float over here. Because in the past, if you did that with an alligator over on Mississippi, it would get out to the deep water and be gone forever. And apparently they float right back up. So that may no longer be a concern. Shooting a, at least crocodile, and having it drown underwater and never float to the surface. Now, from what Jaxi said on the EW streams, I think the gators and the crocs are supposed to have the same AI now, so maybe gators will no longer do it either. And the reason that's important is we have a dark brown variant here. I really like this one. I guess if there's one kind of positive to that one troll on us, it wasn't the variant I really liked, but weapon selection on this map is going to be really key. You really want like a good big deer gun. You've got rooster deer and sandbar deer that are class six. You need something for class three and four animals, whether that's the 243 or the 22250, somewhere in there. Obviously, you want something for stubble quail, a shotgun of some kind. And then you're really left with, do you want to carry a 22 if you want to shoot maybe a stubble quail in the distance or use the 22 strat to alert something or carry something really big for Bantang and Saltwater Crocs. And I feel like you can just go with the 7mm, especially 
if you're not going to lose a croc to drowning deep in the water with even a decent shot from an underpowered caliber. But moving inland a little bit, we've got our first couple of Bantang of this hunt, including a level 4, which we're going to try to get on the move there. They're very similar to Bison in that they trot quite slowly, and you can pretty easily, because of that, get a good broadside shot even on the move. Now, you see, they are just tanks. They will absorb even a 300 round quite well. It's going to bring them down, and I think the 7 mil would be enough most times. It's definitely not a bad idea to have something with a little more power to it, though. It's going to be really interesting. I plan to do a quick guide video like I've done for pretty much every new map that's come out in the last couple of years. And in those videos, I always do like a recommended loadout. I really don't know yet what I'm going to go with on this map. Because there's Magpie Geese too, I think it's a good idea to have the 22. Should a level 5 or a rare or something fly over, you've got that opportunity to just get it there. It's going to be really intriguing, but long shot there at 127 meters, 30% quick kill? You can imagine using the 7 mil what that would be. And you know, one of the cool things about hunting in this area targeting Crocs and Bantang, we'll also have the chance at a number of the deer species on the map, including the Jabba and Rusa, there's fallow deer running down through here, sandbar deer, I think I've seen some hog deer tracks too, so we should have the chance to run into all kinds of stuff, but that looked to be a pretty good one, and I'm not sure about our first shot, but the second shot I think should have got into a lung. Looks like it was intestines and then vitals, so good thing we took the second shot. A 117 two-tone, so I don't think it's as big as the one that we shot in our first video, but they are just such nice looking deer. That's 164 kilo. They maxed at 172. I feel like they're going to be almost like reindeer and caribou then, where they got to be really, really heavy to potentially be a diamond, because that's 30 shy of diamond and a pretty decent weight. I, I found it. You know, obviously we got trolled by the couple of kangaroos, trolled by the crocs. I think getting diamonds on this map is going to be a little bit more challenging and as much as it sucks to get trolled a lot i'm all for the challenge of you know really having to work to get your diamonds and we might as well just go ahead and take a sandbar deer as well if one's gonna walk out you know one thing i noticed i talked about the fact that the sandbar are just referred to in the game as sandbar and not sandbar deer the rusa deer are the same way they're referred to as java and rusa so Maybe that's a local thing, or maybe that is just the way that they're typically referred to in real life. I know in Classic, it's Rusa Deer and Sandbar Deer, but it's interesting to see it being referred to differently, and I kind of like it. It's something a little bit different. But this is a much lighter one than I think we've seen so far. Just a light brown variant. Maybe we have had that one one other time, but I do like them. I can't wait to see what a big one is, because we still haven't seen bigger than, like, a smallish four. Because Diamond is 166 and that's 104. There's a lot of room, you know, for significant antler growth there. But hopefully that's one, if we can find a level 5, that will be a little kinder to us. Because so far, whatever max levels we find, just troll. So finally, we get to find some more Bantang way south of where we were before. Which is probably a good thing, kind of exploring some new territory on the map. But if we can get a decent lung or heart shot at this guy... Well, attempt it. I wanted to try a hard shot. That's not something that we've done yet. That's definitely better, though. Maybe we managed to double lung it. That'll be interesting to take a look at, because he's definitely dropping way faster than the first one. Definitely helps that he went aggressive, but literally went nowhere. 124 scores, so a little bit bigger than the last. 36% quicker. I guess it wasn't much different. And honestly, that shot was about right. If he was broadside and not kind of quartering a bit, I think we can get the heart, but they're no joke. You really have to have that lined up just right to get it. That's a little bit better, though. Up to 800 kilo, which I think is the first time that we've seen that. Got a bunch of these other ones running around here, but I think he is the biggest one. And yet again, we get this thing where they run so slowly, we can set up a good broadside shot, even just as they trot along. And I don't want to say it again because I was wrong last time, but it sure felt like he went down a little bit more quickly than the last. But for just a second, we really have to appreciate just the horns on these things. They just look really, really cool. I'm such a fan of everything they've done with the Bantang. This is the Blackfur type. 133 score where Diamond is 137, so that was pretty close. 
Like you've got these horns that are all the way out to the edges of the ears and then some, and still a ton of length as they kind of curl upwards. They just are such a cool species. I really want to be able to get a diamond to them. And that at that time was a double lung shot, so it was 98% quick kill. That's one of those places where having the 300 does make a big difference, and obviously with the crocodiles as well, it's not as important because I don't think they can end up drowning, but still, it's nice to be able to bring stuff down quickly when possible. You know, these things I really think are going to become a community favorite, not only because they are fairly simplistic to hunt for literally anybody, but they're just so cool. There's so many different varieties. This, again, is something a little bit different. Now, I don't know if it's the light brown or the mocha. I want to say it's one of those two, and we've seen both, but definitely more of like an uncommon. Typically, you see something more like this, and why not, since he's there? Go ahead and take that shot as well. Another big advantage with them, their lungs are so big, there's almost no way of missing that shot if you're even close to behind the shoulder, but let's compare the variations here. This is, oh, this is dark brown. So have we seen that one? I'm not sure, but there's definitely a little more like orange or lighter brown towards the bottom half of the body. So then almost certainly this one was the black fur type again. And slowly but surely, I'm beginning to feel that maybe that mocha that we shot was actually special. This is the black fur type, just a little 106 silver. I just, every single one of them. I just feel like I have to take a moment to appreciate them. They just look so, so cool. I really want to find, like, a big one. And honestly, I can't imagine what the rares might be. Maybe the mocha is one of them, but potential for albino, melanistic. I know both of those are in the Hunter Classic. Those would be just stunning and frankly like you're hunting them in these areas where there's so many shadows a lot of times they're moving between trees and stuff a melanistic might be hard to notice and let's not forget about these guys even though these are some of the least impressive ones we've seen so with this kind of new aggressive state one shot should send both of these running i want to shoot the level three because that's the lowest level one we've seen think the second shot's gonna be good and then the five just takes off I can't wait to see what that's like with other species. That may be something we do even here in early access. Just run to parquet, get a water buffalo to charge, and just shoot the ground and see if it actually ends up fleeing. Lots of lower level ones in through here. Just to show on the map, by the way, that's a bronze. If only we got to keep this stuff, I'd keep that for the Hall of Shame, because barely a bronze. But a bronze male always goes Hall of Shame for that launch. But anyway, we're kind of down into this area which we've gotten a couple of Bantang and some other stuff down through here, but it seems like a good spot for them. And anywhere where these mangrove forests are, there's tons of crocs. But in particular here, there's just all through here. Now there's one more thing I want to point out about the aggression, because you may see that one shot spooks them and think that's, you know, maybe kind of lame because it's more fun when they attack nonstop. But if we mess up that shot, instead of them just standing there and continuing to try to you know, attack us. They'll just flee. It really does make the difficulty of, say, a level 9 charging or a rare, anything like that that you want to get the medal on, it makes it a whole lot more important that you land that first shot. And while it's not necessarily super difficult to do that, like in that case, we managed to just clip the liver. It's still not hard to imagine shooting a little too far back. They turn and flee, and they're gone. If you hit any organs there, they're going to go down into the water, eventually bleed out, float to the surface and you're left with a gold instead of a diamond or in our case probably just a silver instead of a troll gold but I kind of like it on one hand it's cool when like and I think we had three kangaroos attack us and they didn't just leave when we shot a couple but say several crocodiles go after us it is cool when they all continue to attack when you can manage to get them all and you know manage to survive that encounter but I do like it because they do go aggressive so much, you could probably easily get a level nine to attack rather than just getting that free second shot while they stay in there. Now you gotta be precise with the first one. Ooh, whoa, no way. I cannot believe what we just saw. That was a huge piebald sandbar stag. Oh my goodness. I am in shock. So, that's by far the biggest sandbar we've seen, let alone rares. 
but that looked incredible. Like that was a really great piebald pattern. That's him right out there. That is a really nice looking sandbar. Up to 164, I think diamond is 166. So not like a potential diamond or anything. Kind of just slow it up there for a second. There's no way, look at that. No way we can take a shot on the move, but he had like a little bit of white fur like up around his eyes. What an amazing looking deer. I really want him to just stop and give us a shot. As much as it's cool to have the encounter, I really want to get him. And he's just going perfectly broadside. Any other sandbar, we take that shot, not that one. Oh, he's right there. Look at that. 70 meters away, he's actually even turning a little bit more broadside. I want to get him where we can see. That's going to drop him in his tracks. Look at the size of those antlers for a piebald. That's unbelievable. Unfortunately, we're getting kind of late in the day here, so the lighting is not as good as it could be. It's almost 1600. But there's the piebald disturb veg. He just came walking, I guess, back to maybe where his zone was. Look at that. That is just stunning. Oh my goodness. The white fur on like the forehead, the jaw, like I said, around the eye on the other side that we can't see. Got to get a couple of screenshots of that and just everything. Not only the piebald coat, these antlers. That is just top tier. I really like that. So let's see, does that mean then that Sambar do max at 300 kilo? That's a 157 scoring piebald. What an amazing looking deer. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bit upset I can't keep this. Cause that is stunning. Like truly stunning. Man. We can only hope in the live game when the map officially comes out here in just a couple of days to stumble into something like this because wow and knowing the other thing is knowing EW with basically every map since like Parque Fernando most species that can be piebald have multiple variants I can't imagine there's a better variant than this like this just looks incredible so odds of ever getting a pie ball this big with this particular pattern probably are not that good, but nine shy of diamond. Just a huge, huge pie ball sandbar. And he's 289 kilo, that close to diamond. I do think 300 kilo is going to be the max. And that's been kind of the theme that we've seen. Like almost every single Rusa deer max weight estimate is 172 kilo. There are 145 to 172 track estimate, I think. Basically, every Rusa has that estimate. Sandbar, I've seen a couple that only go up to 270, but most are the 270 to 300 kilo estimate. It's interesting. But with all the trolls that we're seeing, whether it's kangaroo or the saltwater crocs, and now with Rusa deer and Sandbar deer, it looks like there's going to really be a challenge in finding those diamonds because you can't just find a heavy track and assume it's going to be a big one. Almost every one of them is a max estimate. But anyway... Something I've noticed, something I wanted to talk about, I had no plans of talking about it after killing what probably will be our best kill in this entire early access period, but let's go back to the lodge and take a peek at that. I mean, just the coolest looking piebald maybe we've ever shot of any kind? Like, factoring everything into consideration, the actual pattern of it, the size of the animal, the... Ah, God, the models are so good. Unfortunately, we still see this. This is a thing with almost every rare. I don't know why, but the jaw likes to stick out past a little bit, and there may be a pose where that doesn't happen. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit better. I just can't believe that we just shot that, and that in a couple of days, it's going to be gone forever. I mean, it'll be in our, our early access lodges, I guess. I just want to stare at it. They look... Incredible. I've been saying I want to find a big sandbar. There's a big sandbar. And it's a piebald. What on earth? I think that's probably going to do it for this video. The thumbnail, probably the title and everything is going to have nothing to do with the Bantang and Croc that we focus on for two and a half hours. It's going to be that guy. And I think it's going to be well deserved. But anyway, 
that's gonna do it for this video. I'm planning on having another one later on today. Don't know if we'll have something that cool, but we'll be back on the Emerald Coast once again. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.